A lot of people like to call what I do boogie boarding, but it's not. Boogie boarding is for children and small adults. <laughs> and I am a full-sized adult. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast in Florida. The sun is shining down on me. I am Spencer Cardia. And I am the original Anne Hathaway. Hitler's wife? Shakespeare. Shakespeare. I knew it was someone in history. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did Hitler have a wife? Yeah. Huh. It was his cousin. I thought, I, th- I thought she had a famous name. I don't know. I'll look it up in editing. What's up, guys? Hopefully, I fixed the audio for you guys. Yesterday, hey, we're outside. We're in another state. We've been cooped up in our studio so long, we don't know how to act around here. No. But um, Today, it's not Croak and Crow. It's Croak and Flamingo. Croak and Flamingo. I've never seen a flamingo in real life. Where are are they in Florida? Um, yeah, I've seen flamingos in Florida. I think they're more Miami. Mm. You've never seen a flamingo? flamingo in real life um you have in a zoo i've never been to a zoo um good so do you protest you haven't gone because you're protesting i'm protesting it? Okay. no i'm not protest. i'm so torn mm. all right you hear first my- of all he's been to a zoo yeah that's i've been to it <laughs> that's for starters but i'm so torn you've been to more than one zoo i'm so torn philadelphia elmwood <laughs> i'm so torn mm-hmm. on the whole zoo thing because in one hand it's like Leave these animals in. Look at the light just gleaming on my face. Ah. In one hand, in one hand, it's good. No, it's bad. Oh, your animals are meant to roam free and do all that. But then the other hand, you have the whole endangered species thing with like pandas and stuff where they've done a lot of good work. The the zoo sciences. I think there's there. I think we should be more particular of what we keep in captivity. Like SeaWorld, I'm against. Am I just against it because everyone's against it? I don't know. Yeah, probably. You're in Florida. Watch out because the SeaWorld Mafia, they 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 shut people up about that. You're gonna just start seeing red dots through the uh, through the brush <laughs> behind us. I don't know. They show me those. The, they show me those pictures on the interwebs of like this is SeaWorld's parking lot and this is where an orca whale lives his entire life. And hey, man, as someone who is one with the ocean. Speaking of the ocean, guys. On my trip down here in Florida, I am a body boarder. Say it with me. Body boarder. A lot of people like to call what I do boogie boarding, but it's not. Boogie boarding is for children and small adults. (laughs) And I am a full-sized adult. I am... His long legs, (laughs) as we learned yesterday. (laughs) You see that muscle definition? What I do is body boarding. It's a professional sport. You can look it up. I have a very expensive bodyboard. It probably you seem defensive when no one has come for you. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, it's whatever, guys. You're just happy because yesterday you got good waves for the for uh, first great time in a while. Floridian waves, and for the first time, guys, on a bodyboard. So it was not a boogie board. Someone insult me. I successfully barreled. Bodyboard barrel. Bodyboard. No. Boy. Yeah. Bodyboard barrel. <laughs> and what that means is, I was shredding. Some some sweet waves. Uh-huh. Big old bomb came mm-hmm. in. And I learned how to bodyboard. Cr- you know, you, you boogie boarders. Wait, why am I shooting down the boogie boarders? They're like my my little brothers. Right. Like the, Yeah. All you stupid surfboarders. Um, no, so, yeah, you can just ride the wave. Surfboarders. They're just Ri- called surfers. You can just ride. <laughs> <laughs> you can just ride the wave in. Uh-huh. Let the inertia of the wave take yeah. you. But the professionals, moi, what you do is what i recently learned you can carve the wave sort of like an ice skate so if you're on a big wave and you lean to one side you're riding it and so i did that and it was working it was a huge wave and i'm like whoa look at me go look how fast i'm actually doing something and then all of a sudden the wave starts crashing over me Ooh, and i'm like tunnel baby i'm in a barrel tunnel vision <laughs> i said yep, call me sally and throw on my sandals because i am in a barrel Fish in a barrel. That was my highlight of yesterday. When I was driving on 95, there's there's billboards all the time that say this exit McDonald's or take the next exit for Starbucks. And um, I saw this one and I forget even what the store was, but it said 
it was for motorcycles or something, and it said lean to this exit because uh, that's how a motorcycle turns. And you made me think of that when you said lean. Yeah, I did that when I was mopeding last time. Oh, I should get a moped this time. Mopeds are so fun. I can't talk about every podcast, but man, they're fun. Yeah. You don't get the you don't get the the fear of being on a motorcycle. I sent you the picture of the um, food delivery guy in Philadelphia on the moped. Yeah. Because you were saying you can't do it really in the city, but. In you the, can. In the centrists of cities, I think you have to. Yeah, but... He had room for his little bag of food right there, and he yeah. he went right up on the sidewalk. But you ain't picking up any chicks doing that. No, he wasn't. He was, he was dropping off food. Could never be me. I also started a new book. Um, it's called Jesus... Jesus Before Christianity. Okay. Can't talk to you guys about it. Can't tell you if I recommend the read, because I just started it, but... Um, okay. I'll keep you guys informed. Um, Wait, do we do anything? Do we? Do you say your name? Yeah, I'm Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway, Hitler's wife. The original Anne Hathaway. Um, today at church, uh, there was a funeral. Oh. And. That's just, they just have that at a normal church? I thought they have like a special service yeah, for Yeah, there's that. a funeral mass and you get invited to a funeral mass and um, and it's held separately, and it's it's an it's an it's your event or occasion, as if like a christening or a um, wedding. But um, down here in Florida, I think it's nice. Um, you probably don't have a lot of people to come to your funeral. It would this way. So the normal mass every morning is at nine o'clock. So, yeah. You know, just open to the public. And so today you go to the normal mass at nine o'clock. It's still a full communion mass um, because some funeral masses aren't communion. Yeah. Just like a blessing of the dead. Um, this was a full communion mass. So like the people who came for, for mass could be um, there. And then I feel like it supported because the person was very old. Yeah. Um, and it's, therefore, and it was nothing unusual. It was. Um, I like it. Yeah. I think it should be more normal. Right. That. Because it's also, you know, how do I put this? Mass is for everybody, and I feel like passing away, especially in religion and Christianity and all that, is such an important thing and such a thing that our belief is based upon mm -hmm. that it a funeral mass c will connect to everyone. Yeah, like it, it's good for you to hear that. Oh, uh, what, what if no one ever like people don't aren't passing away around you? Great for you, but right. Uh, I think the words a priest says or a minister says in the passing of someone to the next life is important, right? And um, you can take a lot from it, right? Even if you don't know the person directly, right? Um, and then you know the family came down for the mass and and they weren't from here and and then you have this support from from your loved one's church yeah and um i think she might have been from an old folks home because a little one of those little transit buses pulled up mm. and all the people came off but this is the thing that was i you know i always have to re learn new things that i didn't know like the part of the our father which is now let me not fall into temptation well the other new thing that i found was the person was cremated and their remains were there in a box. And I said, no, Catholics aren't allowed to be pre cremated. And that's how I grew up. And that's what I was taught. And you were supposed to keep the body in one piece. And you weren't supposed to desecrate it. And you weren't supposed to be upset that it would decay. You had to just let it be. You can't get cremated if you're Catholic. So in church, I was Googling. And yes, you can. You were Googling in church. Because <laughs> <laughs> I needed to know. I needed to know if I had walked in the wrong place. And it's a new a new passage from the Vatican that said, yes, you can be cremated. But with a caveat of do not sprinkle yourself into the ocean or off a mountaintop or at Disney World. Bury it. Bury it in a Catholic cemetery. How do you feel about cream, cream, cremation? Cremation. Um, the Freemasons. I don't like cremation, but what? I'm not against it spiritually. Oh, you just don't like the idea? I don't like the idea, but I'm not against it. I don't think anything at all will happen to your soul from being cremated. I just don't like the idea. 
I think I like the idea. A lot of people do. My dad was cremated. I think, I mean, not to, I mean, this isn't the dark cremation, cremation podcast, but we talk a lot about our bodies are just vessels yep. for our souls. Yeah. And, you know, part of, of the confu like the hurt and the grief in dying is the body remaining. Right. And it's like, Look, the body's there, but it's empty. It's, it's hard gone. for our minds, yeah. And um, I, I think cremation is nice because it it sends like it, it, it it's like a reminder almost yes. that you know, literally in the Bible, from dust to dust, right? You know, right? And um, quite literally, yeah, that's from dust to dust, yeah. Uh, rather than thinking, you're not thinking, even just like that thought it's of distracting. like distracting of like yeah, that person's under the ground. You get yeah, you get um, you kind of get caught up in 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 the body. The macabreness of it, yeah. And when the body's gone, all that's left is the soul. Right. And the soul is somewhere. Right. It's not, where are they? Oh, well, they're buried at 642 yeah. crema- Cremation Street. <laughs> that's an yeah. awful name. And it's hard if you don't believe in the afterlife and heaven, maybe you want to hold on to even the dead body for longer. And, yeah. You know, but because it is quick a cremation is quick it, it, it's the person was there yesterday and today they've been cremated and they're handed to you in a, in a very small box yeah and it's or a ziploc bag it's so shocking and but with your faith being stronger and stronger uh it's okay you know when i was in um trinidad in the caribbean i guess hindus uh i saw um a, a, a roadside no a seaside uh, it's not a crematorium because crematoriums are like a high, the highest heat of it. Yeah. This was literally a a funeral beer buyer. It's when you set. Oh, like back in the medieval days. Yeah, they do that. They do that. Yeah. Still. It happened to your grandfather. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, you know, I like back in the medieval days. Uh, is when they send them out in a boat. Oh yeah. And they shoot the fire arrow, yeah. and it burns straight to Valhalla. Um. What was I going to say? It was about dying or cremation. Well, um, I'm Anne Hathaway, the original Anne Hathaway today, because Shakespeare died today. No. <laughs> today. He died on September 23rd. Is uh, it September 23rd? Because I never know the date and I screw up every time. Yeah. Yesterday is the first day of fall. Today is the second day of fall. Um, we messed up on the dates. We didn't mess up. We don't usually mess up on. What's going on? What's going on? Like yesterday we knew it was the first day of fall, but right. we didn't know what day it was. Numbers. Who cares numbers. about numbers? It's, it's not real. Shakespeare um, died on September 23rd. And for people who don't know, when I say original Anne Hathaway, you know Anne Hathaway from everything. Princess Diaries. Princess Diaries. Um, yeah, that's the one where she was the nerd first. Late Miz. Oh, Late Miz, of course. I wonder if it's her real name. I don't even know. I think it is. Okay. I imagine that. Do you think that they 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 probably they parents definitely knew. I uh, think it was one. Yeah. I think good for them. You know, a yeah. lot of people have a last name, and it's like oh, you should have you should have named right. your first name this. Right. And I think they might have had the last name Hathaway. Right. And they said, hey, let her beat Anne Hathaway, the next great wife to somebody, and then she became famous on her own right. It's like, Ugh. Well, I mean, Shakespeare is for actors, and she became an actress, so she she really. She really honored the name. But it makes you think, who were her parents? Maybe they were they, actors. Did, not even actors, oh. but did they have a love for acting and put her in at a young... I always think that. Oh, because they what, called her Anne Hathaway. Right. Yeah. And it's like, did she start way earlier than we've seen her? Was she five years old doing little commercials for Play-Doh? I don't know. The other person who died today uh, is... Is this it, a death podcast? The other person who died today is St. Pio. Padre and, Pio? Padre Pio. And I was going to say, you'd be more likely to know him as Padre Pio. And that's because... Father Pio. Yeah. When we have modern day saints, and you would consider him modern day because he died September 23rd, 1968. That's very recent. Very, very recent. I think you were alive. No, I wasn't. <laughs> um, neither one of us. We're Gen Z's, remember? Um, he, so he, he was probably so popular and well-known as Padre Pio. He's Italian. So Padre instead of father, um, for so long. And then, and then he became 
St. Pio, because uh, the other day I mentioned um, Mother Catherine Drexel, who is St. Catherine Drexel now, but I'm so used to calling her Mother Catherine Drexel. Mother Cath, that's a mouthful. Yeah. Mother well, Catherine Drexel? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Padre Pio, um, St. It's 11 11, make a wish. Oh, wait, it's not 11 11 to you guys. <laughs> Sorry, your phone oh, just right. in your hand, so. You're right. So um, it is it is his feast day because I don't know if all saints, but I think a lot of saints is the day they died becomes their feast day. So his feast day is September 23rd and which is today. And therefore, for people who don't know him, he had a stigmata, um, which is kind of what brought so much attention to him. A stigmata is when you get the marks of Jesus unexplainably. I have an, I have an astigmatism. In your eyes? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's when I can't see and it is explainable i think it's the shape of your eyeballs but that's not what a stigmata is stigmata is when a holy person do you have to be holy i don't know but you get unexplained so if you see pictures of of pio he might have gloves on sometimes but it is his feast day and so for our walk through thursday it's walk wait sorry i caught off guard i was smelling the palm trees <laughs> it's walk through Thursday. Thursday. Roll the intro, please. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cuz walk through Wednesday just begun. What's up, guys? It is walk. It is walk through Thursday. You know what it is. Do I have to explain it? In Pennsylvania, down in Florida, anywhere you are in the yeah. world, it is the same thing. Every Thursday, we open up the Bible. Ribbit, ribbit, Bible's open. <laughs> and what we do with the open Bible is we find ourselves a verse or a passage or a poem or a story. Yeah. We've done things. Songs, we've done. Songs, psalms, songs, prayers. prayers. Yeah. You name it. You name it. <laughs> and what we, we do is we break it down. We slow it down. We go sentence by sentence, word by word, line by line, letter by letter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we just try to find the deeper meaning in it without just yelling it out like a mantra. Right. We don't say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me walk down a great passion. No, we say. I, I, do, I did. You do do that. <laughs> we say, the Lord is my shepherd. Now, what does that mean? Right. And so we do that about everything, every Thursday. So come along for the ride. Come on. What are you waiting for? Come on. Welcome. Um, <clears throat> so this is Padre Pio, um, day. There's too much, to, we, you know, if we could have given him a whole Friday cause there's so much to talk about and we have so much accurate information about him because he lived in current times. We knew him. So, you know, him personally, <laughs> I knew him. he baptized me. Um, <laughs> but so there is, um, there, you could just look at this for a second. I didn't know if we were going to walk through a quote of his. But then I said, no, we'll walk through a Bible verse. So that's not the Bible. I was just showing you that in case you wanted to say any of his quotes. And, oh. then, and then we'll do the Bible verse that he was um, very attached to. Pray, hope, and don't worry. Worry is useless. God is merciful and will hear your prayer. I think you should listen to that one. Oh, yeah, definitely. Worry is useless. Worry is useless, says St. Pio. So, hey, he's speaking to you guys. Have courage and do not fear. Fear the assaults of the devil. Remember this forever. It is a healthy sign if the devil shouts and roars around your conscience, since that shows he is not inside your will. Ooh. You like that one? Um, a little confused by it, but... You are? Yeah. I'm not confused about it in the slightest. It shows... If you're having trouble outside, it shows... If you if you feel like you're being attacked by the devil, yeah. things are going wrong. Uh, the devil is attacking me. That means the devil is attacking you. Do you know who doesn't feel that? The person who are given into temptation or kicking oh. puppies because the devil is, they're in cahoots. That's inside of them. Gotcha. If you're being attacked, they're attack the devil doesn't attack his own. Okay. I'm not saying anyone is a devil. I'm saying, right, like, right, right. If you are, if you are, he feeding, already had the, he's trying to get you. Yeah. Right. He's trying to get you. He's like, hey, do bad stuff. Okay. My past, oh Lord, to your mercy. My present to your love. My future to your providence. I do like that one. That's a good little, good little tattoo My past or something. To your mercy. So it's kind of like, let me not even. I, please forgive me for yeah. whatever. And that was present. You're my present to your love. To your love. And I feel the love in the presence, which is Christ. And the future is. Your providence. Providence, which is a hard word. But Big it, word. But it means. <laughs> it means something. Guidance. It means. Yeah. Future guidance. 
Prayer is the best weapon we have. It is the key to God's heart. You must speak to Jesus not only with your lips, but with your heart. In fact, on certain occasions, you should only speak to him with your heart. Love it. Love it. Love it with all my heart. (laughs) Uh, Joy with peace is the sister of charity. Serve the Lord with laughter. I like that a lot. And a lot of people don't know that that's an option. Joy with peace. Yeah, no, I think we I think we talked. We did. Did we have a laughter podcast? I think we might have. I remember talking about it doesn't have to be serious. You can have so much fun. Yeah, Jesus, wait. Jesus had fun. Padre Pio watched our podcast. <laughs> I think laughter can, is in some way genuine joy. Like it's, yeah. it's easy to put on a smile, but if someone like makes you laugh, gets you because yeah, once again, a, it, a it, it, it gets you out mm-hmm. of, of whatever you're feeling at that moment. And just for a moment, just for a moment, you experience true joy. Right. And so you're experiencing heaven. Mm. You know, you get all these little glimpses of heaven on earth. And that has to be one of them. He stole that from us. That's literally what we said. Go back and check the laughter podcast and check me on this. Yeah. But I'm almost certain what we said is we said anywhere there's good, there's God. Right. And then we said laughter is joy. Joy is good, which means it comes from God. Right. Padre Pio, you sly dog. We're in, we're in cahoots. You and, you and, you and us. We should have him stand where Frank stands. Yeah, we should. That's, what, that's who stands. You just can't see him. The spirit of Padre Pio. Um, if it, if it, it's fine if it, there's no more. Oh, uh, you just screenshotted it. Yeah, just I was like ready to keep scrolling I down. Know, I, you were like, it's walk through Thursday. I'll just read all his quotes. This this guy seems cool. He should become a saint. <laughs> he should. So he had a lot of like intricate prayers. He had pe- a lot of zingers. <laughs> but he had um he would he prayed for people, um and. He's the he's the patron saint of impossible causes, like um, for miracles and stuff. So a mm. lot of people prayed to him, prayed for a lot of people. People asked him, please pray for me, and he prayed for people. But anyway, um, so his own prayers or his own meditations. But he he was um, strongly attracted to and utilized the ninety first Psalm, Psalm ninety one. Shout out Psalm ninety one. Did David write that one? Don't know. Don't care. So um, the, I'll read the the today's bible verse and then we can walk through it yes okay so it's it's psalm 91 verses 9 to 12 if you say the lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling no harm will overtake you no disaster will come near your tent for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways they will lift you up in their hands nice so that's it let me get an old gander (laughs) Frog. Let me get an old gander of that. The Lord is my refuge. Um, I'm sure everybody, not everybody, but it's very popular and um, common and um, very utilized and very rewarding for a lot of people who utilize it. Now, let's walk through it. Okay. We? So my question is this, and I already have an answer. I say the Lord is my refuge. A good lawyer asks a question here and he knows the answer to yes i say the lord is my refuge and i say it every day you do what no oh (laughs) (laughs) i'm saying if you say it every day yeah okay what happens when harm overtakes me you you will feel like i guess he's not my refuge yeah but i thought i was supposed to be taking on the angel wings okay do you want the answer yes oh because that's a big question mark and it's a big reason for people to the answer is this guys the answer is this. What does refuge mean? Safe place. Safe place. Yeah. Go to so, higher ground. Where yes. The flood's coming. Uh, so, and you make the most high your dwelling. So you make God your dwelling. That's where you want to. What is dwelling? Dwelling's where you live. No disaster will come near your tent. Now that's an important word. Okay. So people might think, well, my house just burned down. My dwelling just got ruined. Right. Or my, 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 yeah, so yeah, my, my tent, my tent yeah. just got ruined. Right. That's not the tent we're talking about, right? Ah. Jesus, the Lord is my refuge and most, most high is my dwelling. So what it means is no bad will come near me. It's that when your house burns down, that was never your true refuge. You so c- when your body burns down from cremation, yeah, that wasn't your dwelling. That, that's the idea. Like, so the idea, if people try the to Lord put, is my temple, right? Yeah. So if people are trying to poke holes in this, the whole point of it is that my body's if you make it so that none of these earthly things are what you, where you consider your 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 place, your safe right. place, it's with God. 
nothing bad can happen to you here. Right. So so no, no bad will come to you. Right. You, it, it'll never be, well, look at me. I'm in the jungles with no food. It's I, I'm with God and, and God will never leave you. God, right. God's, God's refuge will always be there. Right. And so that's where I, I think that's why it's saying no disaster will come near your tent. Right. Will a hurricane take down your house? Of course. But that's a house made and of it, it, sticks and bricks. And yeah. If you say this house is my refuge, guess what? Nothing. The, the hurricane will take out your house. And it's like, well, I guess this refuge wasn't great. If the Lord is your refuge. Right. Your house gets taken out by a hurricane. Right. Your Lord is still your refuge. He's still the person you can lean on. Still the person you can ask for help and who will help you. Right. That's what I say about that. Yeah. And that's really interesting because if you think of Padre Pio, the quote you just said, which was my present, your love. It didn't say like my present. Could it be a great house or you know a great buffet? You know, yeah. is like the, the thing you want in the present. Of course, we yeah. all want you know to be able to live and eat and and um, be clothed. But most important thing is love because yeah. everything else is can, temporary. It's temporary and it can disappear. And that's the one thing that will not disappear and will not. No disaster can come between it. Right. So. Two people's house burns down. One considers the Lord the refuge. One considers their house the refuge. The one person is like my life's ruined. The other person is like, well, this was never. This was always temporary. Right. I'm God still loves me. I'm still with Him. He will guide me to the way. To I told a you. House. Um, uh, uh, once before, I believe on the podcast, but the Buddhist monks must move. I think every two years. Yeah. And you can only move with what you can carry, which they don't. It's not a problem. You know, like they just pick up. A bag but uh it's to remind them that everything's temporary that it's um also i remember you know because my aunt's a nun she they would change her position so she was a school teacher as as, as a catholic nun but um she would be stationed in san francisco and then she'd be stationed in in philadelphia and she'd be stationed somewhere else and it was a moving around where like people kind of don't like that you want to be yeah rooted but it's a remembrance of it's all temporary yeah um. Yeah. So, anything else? You say, "Lord is my refuge, and you make the most high your dwelling. No harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent, for He will command His angels concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands." I love it because when you think about um, being protected by God, and this isn't really your body, and this isn't really your house, and this isn't really your state, it's sort of it's still a sort of an alone feeling. Yeah, you know, and and so I went to the funeral today, and and um, people were a little sad. Uh, I could see around me, and it's like her name was Anne, God bless, and um, they're like, oh, like Anne, like she used to be part of our group, mm. and and we miss her, but all, we also at least we're all together. Like I said, they all came on that little bus to the yeah. to the funeral. She's alone now, but that's saying no, because the angels will yeah. never let you be alone. They'll lift you up in their hands. Um, yeah, so God commands his army of angels around you. So you're um, obviously you're never alone because you're God's child, but also just that that community feeling, the 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 um, the friendship and yeah. the support. The support. Uh, there's the, angels. I think it's a good word. Yeah. And once again, if we go back to the burnt down house analogy, with like the, the angels, like so it's one thing you know, when God's always with you, but then there's that sort of more tangible like in person with angels where you feel that support so it's right. like you feel the love from god and then the angels around you holding you in their hands is like the definition of what do you do when you put a, a baby's head in your hand when you're holding it you support you support it. in yeah. the head so the idea of in the hands it's that not only do i feel loved and i even though my house burned down i feel the support i feel like you know i have that uh that what is it I keep wanting to say hand on my back, but that doesn't make sense. Like when you're helping. Whatever. Help in hand. <laughs> <laughs> hamburger helper. Yeah, you have that hamburger helper to take the next step. Like, okay, now you're like, I'm okay. I'm so loved. And then you feel that support of, okay, what's next? What's next? All right. Any um, Shakespeare quote to take us out? Shakespeare quote to take us out. Uh, I think everybody in Horatio. the world... That's it. <laughs> should know. I should be able to say one thing or recognize as one thing from Shakespeare. Well, you did. You did do it. Horatio yeah. is from. Um, oh wait, what about this? 
To be or not to be? Good. Thank uh, you. Thank you. What's I'll, yours? I'll say, um, Romeo, Romeo, we're for right there, Romeo. <laughs> it sounds like we need to brush up on our Shakespeare. Romeo and Juliet is in the town of Verona. <laughs> End. All right, guys, that has been Walk Through Thursday. Hopefully, the audio is better today. If not, kick rocks. I'm on vacation, so I don't read your comments. Um, just kidding. I do. We'll be back tomorrow for Fun Friday. Fantastic yes. Florida Friday. Yo, yeah. Fantastic Florida Friday. See you then. Peace, love, prosperity. Go check out Project Pio. Go check out William, William Shakespeare, Shakespeare <laughs> and Hathaway, both new and old. Peace. <laughs>